how loud should music be for sleep? In this video, I'm going to answer this question scientifically. I'm also going to offer some implementable advice. And then finally, I'm going to look at some specific circumstances which might change the answer to this question. I'm Dr. Thomas Dixon, expert in the science of music. At Biohacking with Music, I'll show you how to use the science of music to thrive. It's important to decide how loud the music will be before using it for a couple of reasons. The obvious one is that you want to look after your hearing. So sounds that are over a certain decibel range for an excessive period of time can be really damaging towards your hearing. Of course, we know that jet engines and things like that can damage your hearing immediately. But if you listen to continuous sound at a medium loud volume, this can also do harm over the long term. So ideally, you want to protect your ears when using music or noise for sleep. The other reason is that if it's too loud, that can be distracting and you don't want to distract yourself from sleep. Now, to answer that second question, when we look into the scientific research, what they recommend is that anything over 30 decibels can actually make you more awake and alert. So there's research out there suggesting that if you had noise or music over 30 decibels, it could actually impact your sleep quality or keep you awake. There's research that sounds over 30 decibels can impact sleep. So ideally, you want to play music or noise at or under 30 decibels. Now, this isn't a particularly helpful answer because you probably don't have a decibel meter. There are apps on your phone you can use, but this can be a hindrance. And if you're playing the sounds through the apps, how are you going to measure them? So what I would recommend is to play the music or noise as quiet as comfortably possible. So if you have trouble hearing the sounds, that's too quiet. But if you're listening to the sounds and they're comfortable but very quiet and you can hear them, then that would be ideal. It's very implementable. Otherwise, you can get out your decibel meter and measure the 30 dB. Now, there are specific circumstances where you might want to have the sounds louder. For example, if you're using white noise or grey noise or pink noise or music to block out your distracting neighbours or traffic or aeroplane sounds that might keep you awake, you'd want to increase the volume of these sounds so that they can mask or drown out these other unpleasant sounds that might keep you So in these instances, you can turn up the volume of the sounds and music a little bit louder. Now, if we go back to the decibel meter, sounds over 85 dB can have negative impacts on your hearing in the long term with long exposure times. So ideally, you want to keep it below that level. But if you don't have a decibel meter, what I would consider is turning the volume up to, again, a comfortable level that drowns out somewhat of the sound. Because here, the goal is not to completely hide the sounds, but to make the sounds that you hear in your environments less loud by using music or white noise to increase the noise threshold. So the difference between the white noise and, say, the aeroplane sound might be less than the difference between the aeroplane sounds and silence. In this video, we've addressed how loud music should be for sleep. This was in the context of the 30 decibels from the scientific literature, listening as quiet as comfortably possible as an implementable strategy. And finally, listening to music at a comfortable level under 85 decibels if you're using it to mask or drown out unpleasant sounds. If you want more information on how you can use music to change your life, subscribe or follow below. And if you have a friend or colleague who you believe would benefit from this information, please share it with them. Thank you for your time.